I be the mix master flow, you're never gonna know where I go Cause I'm slipping and I'm sliding like an eagle Flying real high, get the perspective of the people Give it to you cause I think we're created equal <laughs> Alright, I might have got a little too excited there Don't be hating on me, but we're gonna talk to Biggie Smalls today I tried to talk to him yesterday, I wrote him a note And I just wasn't feeling it yesterday, I had already did a read and God was like, listen, you got to pace yourself. You got to get your rest. Don't be, you know, he knows how I roll. If I do one reading, I want to do like eight because it's so much fun. So I was too tired to do it is what I'm saying. <laughs> but insistence, Biggie Smalls was like insistence and Archangel Michael too. Because he's here protecting us in our golden bubble. Biggie Smalls hate. Oh, uh oh. Biggie Smalls, Christopher Wallace, I thank you so much for your contribution to society and our pop culture and what we know as rap music it really changed the game. I remember when I was growing up, about seven, six, seven, no, maybe like seventh, eighth, eighth, ninth, tenth grade, eleventh grade, definitely high school, all through high school. Um, the rivalry between Tupac and Biggie and just the whole change of the music and the rivalry between East and West Coast, which at the time I thought was just completely ridiculous, honestly, having lived on both. It's like, where do we go? What if we're not on either side? <laughs> Obviously, that was propaganda, but I am so excited to talk to Biggie Smalls because in all of the times that... He was on TV, which we only had MTV and VH1 back then, so it wasn't like we had social media like we do now. So you only had what they were putting out, so we didn't get to see him talk all the time, or at least I didn't. I feel like I didn't get to see him really be his authentic self. I felt like he was always on. He was always this Biggie Smalls character. But I feel like he was like a lot more than that. <clears throat> keep looking, he says. He says, keep looking. Don't worry, Biggie Smalls. Christopher, do you want me to call you Biggie? What do you want me to call you? Dennis. I've... Dennis? Well, I'm not going to call you Dennis. <coughs> Some, somebody named Dennis could be significant. I was like, what do you want me to call you? He's like, Dennis. Very funny. So, thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for your contributions. And they were very important to my development as a lyrical genius. What you clearly saw, I am. Uh, that was a freestyle, by the way, so you know it's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> so, tell me, where would you like us to go? What messages do you have for us that you'd like to share about your human experience? We would love so much to know your perspective of your human experience. He wants to go for the archetype. So I'm going to do the archetypes. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much for being able to bring us together. I am so excited to be here to be of service. My name is Patience. I am a psychic intuitive. And I am practicing my psychic gift via my spirit guides, the Guild of the Golden Triangle. And we do host a show on we host a podcast on spotify called spirit news where we teach you about your non-physicalness and i'm so excited to be able to do this this is one of i'm having so much fun it's that's all i think about like literally I just want to wake up and talk to you guys the collective but i'm here as a humble servant of the collective spirit says in one to the all and all to one and i really resonate with that so I am just here to send love, be love, show you what love feels like, okay? So Biggie Smalls, thank you so much for being in my golden bubble. Let's do it. Tell us what you want us to know. What is the story that you want us to know about your human experience? Mr. Biggie Smalls, Christopher Wallace, thank you so much for being here. Whoa, I got three that popped out. Okay, we have the creator to start. Well, that's true, right? Definitely true. And the shadow reversed. And 
the bardo. Mmm. Whoa, look at this. Look at this um, rainbow, and then look at the center. It's like an eye. It's like one's eyes on the outside, one eyes on the inside. And in the middle of a shadow, or in reverse. So, an angel? Made by the creator? Watched by many? You're respectful, he says. Aww. You're respectful, he says. So he was the creator. He was God's creation. He was not shadow reverse, so he was the opposite of the shadow, light. So he was a light worker that was being watched or was being targeted or was being... Um, Controlled in some way. Hmm. His creations were being controlled. He was supposed to be a creator of light. And somehow his creations got... Um, taken or controlled somehow. And so look how what he's created in the middle. It's dark and empty. So... Something took his creativity or something absorbed him. Oh, I don't know why I want to say that. Okay, something absorbed him. Oh, wow. Something absorbed die. him. Something died. He said die. Yeah, something killed him. Something took his creativity away. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christopher, for being with us today. Please continue to tell us what you want us to know. I have the mirror in reverse under the creator. I have this little moon over here, and I have this eye over here. Hmm. So something that was trying to mirror the creator, something that was trying to mirror the creator or take pe God's creations or mirror, create the create. maybe someone stole his music, his creations and tried to mirror them. Yeah, the hunter. The hunter under the shadow. Oh shit, look at this. Hmm. So some kind of hunter that... Visual. <coughs> so some kind of hunter came after him because of his light. Because of his creati creativeness. They saw something in him that they wanted to mirror or emulate or take or uh, create off of them. Shapeshifter in reverse. So something in secret or... Uh, so maybe this hunter who... Uh, the positive things about a hunter is that hunter goes and gets food for the family, for nourishment, to go getter, is very motivated, um, has a level of survivability, always like pushing it forward because the hunter has to survive. Um, so it's like a balance, you know, because if you become too much of a hunter, then you know you go into reverse. So now you're hunting for prey, like you're hunting for fun instead of for prey instead of for food but it's right side up but the shapeshifter Sophia. Sophia could be significant under the bardo suggests that there was someone portraying a hunter in this group but really they're shapeshifters secretly secretly shapeshifters and look there's another eye 
So, hunters that pretend not to be shapeshifters keep a close watch on lightworkers' creativity? Okay. So they were... They knew that he was of the light or had light in him or had creative spark in him and so they were watching him and mirroring him um oh uh, yeah maybe it was someone mirroring him trying to get him to be friends with them or something but really he was a shapeshifter yeah mirroring like when someone who has mental illness will, or, or doesn't have an identity will, Bruce could be a significant Bruce Sophia. They'll mirror you. They'll watch what you do and just kind of like mimic what you do back to them to make you think that they're like normal, but really they're just doing what you're doing. And there's a siren in reverse, which could also be part of the shapeshifter energy. I got this siren reverse under the mirror and the creator. I think there was a female that was trying to take his lyric, take his creations or mirror his creations. Cause look at this. It looks like the sirens like turning into this shiny distorted triangle. Hmm. So possibly something under the moonlight, something with his creations, a siren and a hunter were mirroring him or, or trying to copy him or trying to mirror his creativity or something like that. Neil N I mean K N E E L So something about kneeling the thread oh the storm reversed and the thread So I'm getting that in the past there could have possibly been a storm with this hunter, sadistic. This sadistic hunter wanted, the storm was that he wanted him to kneel to him. This sadistic hunter wanted, wanted Mr. Biggie to kneel to him and that was a storm for them that started him being watched possibly by sec secretly by shapeshifters that were looking for a reason to hold on to him or some within that were looking within him some kind of thread it looks like holding on by a thread doesn't it like Everywhere is dark and this one thread is going to this rainbow, but it's like hanging on by a thread within. And he said within. So they were looking for some kind of <coughs> weaknesses within Biggie Smalls or something to, I guess, make them be holding on by a thread. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting stuffy all of a sudden. So because from what I'm getting, from what he, 
from what Mr. Biggie Small says is that this storm that happened with this hunter and him, a light worker, happened because this hunter is sadistic and wanted Biggie to kneel. Let's, um, maybe he didn't end up kneeling and so the hunter turned into the bardo where he was watching his every move, um, being a shapeshifter, pretending to be nice in his face, but really um, had ulterior motives to have him hanging by a thread somehow. Wanted Biggie to be hanging by a thread, but not know his true motives if he's a shapeshifter on the counter. Yeah, I, <laughs> Biggie says, I'm going to put it all out on the counter. I don't care. I'm going to tell everything. He says, it's going to be all out on the counter. Or maybe he put all his, um, you know, he put all the thing, problems he had on, out on the counter with this hunter. And the hunter didn't like it. Maybe that was the storm. He's like, I'm not going to kneel. What are you talking about? Why do I get, why are you so sadistic all the time? And the hunter did not like that. He turned into the shapeshifter. But in secret. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, so this is all like different colors, but look where the rainbow is. It's like the shapeshifter is trying to control, dangle this rainbow in front Ceres. of Biggie with series. Biggie says series, so possibly what he was dangling in front of his face was a series of albums or record deals or whatever. Um, some kind of series of something. Or maybe this was a series of events that he did over and over again. This hunter. This hunter shapeshifter would constantly be dangling things in front of him, um, having him hang by a thread, always trying, always watching him, his every move and controlling his creativity. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much, Biggie. I appreciate you telling us your story. It's my honor to be able to tell it for you. Where should we go next? So, but it backfired. Some kind of backfire, he says. The series, he did this a series of times and, and then something backfired. Please tell us what backfired on this situation. What was it that backfired? Thank you so much, Biggie, for being with us. Whoa, a blessing. A blessing backfired? Oh, and it fell out right over the storm in reverse. <clears throat> Murderer. Look. Murderer. Biggie Smalls could have guide. Biggie, Biggie says he was murdered by some sadistic person who wanted him to kneel, who was supposed to be his guide that dangled blessings in front of his face that created this so it's a storm in reverse so it was a blessing something that he was promised or given or something personality, personality. Christopher Wallace was a blessing his personality the hunter didn't like this the hunter didn't like that he was so blessed. Oh, maybe that's what the mirroring is. Maybe Biggie's saying that this hunter was supposed to be his guide and would dangle blessings in front of his face or something. Or, hmm. Or maybe that's why he wanted him to kneel because... Christopher Wallace is so blessed all the time. He was some kind of power trip or something. All right, let's continue. Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you so much. I love you. It's my honor to be able to tell your story. Please tell us more of what you want us to know. Thank you so much, Biggie Smalls. We have Christopher Wallace, Mr. Biggie Smalls in the house. Kicking the door, waving the 4-4. Oh, sniff. Okay, so maybe drugs are involved. Or maybe he's sad. Sniff, sniff. Let me, let me get my hair over. 
I gotta keep the shape, you know. I gotta keep keep your shape. Sh 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 okay, so I just got distracted. Thank you so much for being with us. I am so excited to be doing this. Please tell us more. Is that all you wanted from this deck was blessings? Okay. Please tell me more. Please tell me about this storm or hunter. What was this hunter's problem? What? Why did this hunter try to take your creations? Or even the siren. Tell me who this siren in reverse is. Tell me something. Thank you so much. Please, Arch Archangel Michael, cleanse my field. Remove anything that isn't of my vibration or higher, that isn't for the highest good. Please seal it with a golden bubble of love and light. Please reactivate my core smoky core quartz armor. And thank you so much, Biggie, for being here. Oh! <laughs> Wheel of Fortune in reverse. I told you something about a blessing or luck or something. Bad luck, upheaval, disorder, external forces, lack of control, disruption, unwelcome change, delays, setbacks. So the hunter was creating delays for his blessings. He was creating storms and trying to control his blessings and create delays for Biggie. Tortured. tortured. Biggie says tortured. This hunter slash shapeshifter tortured Biggie with blessings that he never got. Bad luck. It was always upheaval. It was always disordered and disrupted. So, so far I have a hunter who's really a secret shapeshifter who is hating on Biggie trying to block his blessings. I have a little fortune in reverse over blessings and storm. So he was always creating disruptions. Um, I keep saying he, but it can, it could be a she too. Um, a hunter could be a she. Um, I also have the siren in reverse, which could be a part of this. So it could be a group effort. I have the bardo. So it could have been a group effort of people who were hating on Biggie. Clock. The clock. They're clocking them. And he said, live, he said, live, he said, it was tortured, it was an accident, live and clock. Yeah, he died before his time, it was an accident. He wasn't ready to die yet, and he was murdered, possibly by two people, the hunter and the siren in reverse. The hunter who's really a shapeshifter secretly a shapeshifter or it could be three people the third person is a secret shapeshifter can you please tell me more about the siren or the hunter who they were to him need to stay needed to stay need to stay he had a lot he needed to stay for. There's a lot of people who depended on him. He just was not ready to go. Yeah, he was uh, seven of pentacles. He was making investments. And he had things coming to fruition. And his hard work was about to pay off. He was about to harvest rewards and profits. He was manifesting. He was cultivating something. And nurturing something, a blessing. A blessing. Huh. Hmm. Maybe they knew that he something was about to come in for him or or maybe he wanted to branch out. Because look at this. This is branch out the the creativeness is on the outside so maybe he wanted to step outside of this box he was in where he felt no more creativity um yeah and maybe someone didn't like that maybe someone didn't like that 
They didn't like that he wanted to make his own investments. They didn't like that he was manifesting his own ideas. Hmm. Oh, I have the Empress in reverse that's just here for no reason. I don't even know why. I didn't put it there. The Empress in reverse. That must be the Siren in reverse. Insecure. Infertility. Lack of confidence. Lack of growth. Overbearing tendencies. Disharmony and negligence. Hmm. The Empress in reverse. The Siren in reverse and the Empress in reverse. This is a really... This... Whoever this woman is... <clears throat> it's not... It doesn't have to be a woman, but it's a female energy. She's a... He said suitcase. She's a nutcase. She needs to pack it up. She needs to pack up her suitcase and go home because... Apparently she is just out she she's overbearing, she's disharmonic, she's negligent. I hope this ain't little cute I'm just saying I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is. I don't know that detail. Nine of Wands Resilience Resilience. This is the card that Matthew Perry had, I thought. An ongoing battle. D and the death card. The death card. He had to pack his suitcase. He had to pack his suitcase for a battle. Drained of energy. Didn't I say something absorbed him? Didn't I say absorbed him earlier? Learning from past failure, gather your strength, fight your corner, last stand. Last stand and then death. Plant. Plant. Last stand, plant. Last stand to ground yourself and root. He was his last he, There's some kind of <coughs> ongoing persistent battle going on. I'm sorry, I have spirit, spirit burps. Some kind of battle that was going on that finally came to a death because obviously he died. It was an ongoing battle that ended in his death. Wow. That ended in death. Stripping away the worthless matter. It's pretty harsh. It's kind of like what stood out to me. River. And send it down the river? So somebody got rid of Biggie, like, throwing trash down a river. It, they didn't matter to him. It was like stripping away worthless matter, throwing it down the river. Whoever took Biggie's life. Wow, that's messed up. Just an object, I'm hearing. Just an object. Biggie's just an object in the way of some of this hunter, of these people's desires. He was just a means to an end is what I'm getting. All they did was gas him up to copy his style and mirror his image or something. Ten of Swords reversed. Escaping ruin, pulling yourself together, learning from past hardships, fears coming true. Hmm. Six. Six. Ten plus six is sixteen. One plus six is seven. Death. Look, this person's dead. It's like, he's saying... <clears throat> he's saying that these people did not learn from their past hardships. They 
pulling yourself together, learning from past hardships, fears coming true. It's like they're hmm. 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 Yeah, these people brought a death multiple deaths to to Biggie with his finances with his reputation with his like it was always an ongoing battle with these people there's always something going on he was always like having to protect his stuff and not talk to certain people and it just always infected like everyone around him was infected with this like hater hater aid and they were always trying to mirror him and he was starting to catch on that people were I guess using him maybe or <clears throat> yeah that they were backstabbing him that they were backstabbing him and they were enemies and that they were <clears throat> bad mouthing him this is in the past and possibly curses it says they were always cursing him and behind his back and praying for his downfall basically um bitterness doormat failure ruin collapse breakdown exhaustion inability to cope so he was around people who were constantly like this person, the Empress and Siren in reverse, just overbearing, um, insecure, infertile. They didn't have any light or creativity of their own. They all kind of operate in a dark place, except for Biggie. Biggie was like their thread they were holding on to for something, or, or they were just so like obsessed with him and creating um, bad luck for him and upheaval. It was like constantly cre um, creating upheavals for his blessings and it was always uh, making it hard for him to make investments. It was an ongoing battle to just always make investments and to cultivate and to have um, financial freedom and all that. <coughs> yes. Yes. He says yes. So it brought a death to it, it was fears coming true. Mm. Oh shit. So I'm getting also that because he was surrounded by so many people um, like this that wanted a death to him and his blessings and a death to his creativity and a death to his like so many things they wanted a death, you know, metaphorical and literal, that it was an ongoing battle. They were always, they were always, um, taking his blessings and it got there. He realized that everyone in his circle is backstabber and he started to become, I don't want to say paranoid, but he just knew that he couldn't trust anybody. So everyone he came into contact with, he had a fear that, you know, his reputation was going to get ruined or people were going to believe rumors about him or, or whatever. And so you know, his fear started coming true because he was thinking about it so much because that's what he was surrounded by. And so that's why some shapeshifters came into his life that were dangling blessings in front of his face as he was hanging on by a string or surrounded by darkness. The writing on the walls. Oh, the writing on the walls, he says. The writing on the walls. Wow. Thank you so much. That is something. All right, where do you want me to go now? Let's let's look at who these people are. Biggie, thank you so much for being here. Please tell me about this hunter. Whoa, I got two already. All right, I got a lover, spinster, fanatical, a pressure, oppressor. Miss could have possibly miscarried. You know what? Let me. I didn't even. Let me, uh, <laughs> shuffle. That didn't feel right. Archangel Michael, please cast out any energies that are not here for our highest good, that are trying to stop our messages from getting out. Please seal this bubble with love and light. 
and please reactivate my shield. Thank you so much. I love you. Okay. Yeah. Spirit, Biggie, please tell me more about this siren, this empress. Is this shapeshifter and hunter? Is it? Is the siren and the hunter the shapeshifter or is this a third person? I don't know. I need you to tell me. Kind of feels like that's their energy, like it's two people. Whoa. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So it's two people who are secretly shapeshifters, but they look normal. Burned. Burned. Book burning, branding, house fire, persecution. Persecution or torture. He said he was tortured. This says trauma was torture, and he said on the thing he was tortured. His death was an accident. He wasn't ready to die. I mean, it was murder, but abuse of technology. Abuse of technology. Celibate. His love style is celibacy. Huh. So they made him fear that his branding was going to get burned, his reputation. So he was tortured by abuse of technology. Next one I have Wild West. Cowboy, settler, indigenous person, other. Lover. Spinster. A fan. Fanatical. Oppression. Good energy. So this lover, this lover, whether the hunter or the siren, I don't know yet, um, could have possibly been real fanatical in her face in their faith about something? Some kind of oppressive faith? Or maybe they were a fanatical fan? Um, but I don't know. They were fanatical, which means like obsessive and um, eccentric about something like obsessive compulsive addictions. Functioning addict, enabler, caretaker, rock bottom. Androgynous, true love, self love, stars, psychic wounding. So Biggie had um, some addictions. I, oh, you know what? I think he had a cocaine addiction because look. This looks like um, a bunch of little white dots of cocaine and then the mirror with some white on it and then a little, you know, side rock with white. And then he said, um, what did he say earlier? I think he said white. So <clears throat> these people have an addiction to, to um, nose candy. A body. You mean um, so much so their body was addicted? Maybe... They would have um, withdraw symptoms when they would come down. I have war. Trauma. Trauma. And didn't I say it was an ongoing battle? An ongoing battle drained of energy. Hmm. Wife, widower, material loss, death, childbirth, walking the middle path. Move south. Move south. So this empress in reverse could have possibly been um, a wife, and the hunter could have been a lover, or true love. 
And I think they possibly all have an addiction to nose candy. But at least Figgy does. And there was some kind of Wild West uh, shootout over branding, a book burning, a persecution. Abuse of technology again. Brainwashing. Look how this brainwashing is like a shapeshifter. All the colors. Wow. And like this burning card. And like this addiction card. Look. They all have similar colors and tones. I think that this... Bardo or group this couple was using drugs to brainwash <clears throat> Biggie into keeping him in a constant battle state or a constant traumatized state where he became weary and fatigued and it blocked and it would block his blessings it would block his blessings they were socially brainwashing him using some kind of technology. Jacqueline could be significant. Death a accident again. And a celibate male. Hmm. I don't know why celibacy has to do with anything. Interminable. 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 Intermin. Intermin. Hmm. So <clears throat> they kept him addicted with the nose candy to block his creativity because he wanted to venture out and create on his own and make investments on his own or something. And this group of people locked it down, locked in his creativity, said, no, you're not doing that. And they did that by <clears throat> using his addictions against him. And he must have had a handler or something that kept it like the Wild West for him, brainwashing him always, shape-shifting, keeping him hanging on by a thread, persecuting him whenever he tried to stand up for himself. So because of all this drama that was happening and it was always like the Wild West and he didn't want to do drugs anymore but they kept on, um, you know, giving him drugs, um, he was trying to escape, he was escaping ruin. He was trying, he had been backstabbed by enemies, he was surrounded by enemies and he was just trying to learn from the past, he was trying to do better. He wanted to get out of this mess. Um, I have astral experiences in reverse. So, post-life review, out-of-body experience, near-death experience. So, he, they might have tried to kill him once before. And modern. <laughs> they must they must have tried to kill him once before, moder moderately. Um, and it didn't work. Because he had a near-death experience. Or an out-of-body experience. Or something. performer <laughs> yeah he was a father his lessons peace faith is a secret he was a witness or a bystander to something um, entertainer musician actor yeah he was in his north node he was definitely doing what he was supposed to be doing but he had these people who are these people that were what what were they a part of? The law. The law. Lawyer, judge, law enforcer, lawmaker. Health issues. Infection, contagious illness, genetic illness, 
hypochondria. Huh. And secrets. Secret agenda, secret affair, kept in the dark, secrets exposed. Map. Map. <clears throat> he said map, so maybe they have some kind of <clears throat> map or like fail safe plan when their secrets get exposed or when someone's not down to hold the secrets anymore or or maybe he wanted to go to the law about these secrets and he, all of a sudden he got sick or something he got a health scare maybe that's when he had his near-death experience when they almost tried to kill him the first time they tried to kill him with an infection or some kind of illness because he was trying to go to the law about something that he witnessed or that he was a bystander of. Oh, what did you witness? What were you a bystander of? What's the secret that sexual assault? Victim, witness, perpetrator, bystander. So, a man possibly with a obsessive love style and an abandonment issue from Africa possibly and his lessened gluttony so indulgence so he had a secret about a sexual assault that he could have possibly been a witness to or a bystander of or a victim of shirt the shirt off his back it could have been him he could have been a victim of sexual assault and maybe he got some kind of health scare from it and he wanted to go to the law about it tell us more thank you so much for telling us this tell us more please who sexually assaulted you biggie who sexually assaulted you or were you did you see it who was it why is it a secret why couldn't you tell anybody why couldn't you tell anybody about this sexual assault why was it a secret marionette and stop because he was a puppet he was just a puppet they had dictatorship over him they had the ability to stop things for him to break pause things for him to create stagnation so he was just their puppet this person's puppet this group's puppet who's this group a vow or a vow reversed a vow taken in the past or in secret that was a trap there are children here um, that was supposed to bring luck and real estate and but it just brought temptation he was bribed he took money to keep a secret and he took a vow that ended up being a trap that was supposed to bring luck and, re and real estate. But it brought sexual assault and addiction. And health issues. Why couldn't you tell anybody? Oh, because he took a vow. And he had made a promise that it was going... He got all these things, money, a car and stuff. To keep the secret as part of the deal. Uh, part of this religion. Some kind of religion. Donation pray. 
Some kind of religion. <clears throat> Lychee. Lychee. Please tell me more. Please tell me more about this group. <coughs> Excuse me. Please tell me more about this group. Cat. Cat. Never felt passion this intense. Chemistry. So some kind of chemist? Because there's this little drink here, some kind of chemist, and spirit said cat and lychee, so maybe some kind of alchemist or energy chemist or maybe they make potions or something. Oh, yeah, old school outdated thinking, conditioning, so some kind of Outdated thinking for religion, some kind of outdated religion, religious beliefs. This is upside down. Second chance. He no second chances. So there's no once there's no second chances with this old school religious outdated thinking. Some kind of conditioning. Um, no reconciliation. No making amends. No opportunities. And date. Get back out there. No, no second chances with setting a date or meeting someone new. Hmm. And we had chemistry. So some so this group has a way of minute. minute they have minute man men. They have minute men. Maybe that's the hunter that do some kind of chemistry to take that is part of an old school outdated religious structure that takes away your second chances to get back out there. Heart fog in reverse and soul contract. So he was faced with all these problems and he did make this vow. He wanted to break free, <clears throat> he wanted to stop being a marionette. And he wanted to fix his mixed signals and his blocked emotions. He wanted to not be messed up anymore. He wanted to break the soul contract that he made. That's him hanging by a thread. He wanted to break this soul contract again. Or he wanted to break this flower pots. Now he's pushing up flowers. So because he wanted to get out of this deal, that's why he's dead. Because he was going to go to the law with information about a sexual assault that he either was part of or a victim or a bystander to during a vow he made to get that was a trap in the past to get luck, real estate. It was a temptation and it was burning at him alive it was he couldn't handle it it was it, the guilt was eating at him he had so many people around him trying to bring him down he has a uh, empress in reverse he's got addictions he's got people watching him <coughs> <coughs> Healing heart in reverse. Yeah, he's always in a state of not being able to heal his heart. So he's trying to go to the law about about some sexual assault 
and about some health issues that were there could have possibly been some kind of health record that was taken after some kind of sexual assault that he tried to go to the law smoke. with smoke he was trying to ugh, he didn't want no smoke though because they have people in all places they have them as judges lawyers lawmakers law enforcers they're all part of this group even in the healthcare it, um even in healthcare industry and they're brainwashing people who wanna they're brainwashing people who would believe anybody of what the of what Biggie was saying. Wow. Karmic relationships reversed. Yeah, these were karmic relationships for turmoil in the past that he was connected to. Wow. Look over here, first card down the top, I have profit led. Religious devotee. <clears throat> once. He said once. So one time was all it took for him, and he didn't want to do it anymore. Something happened where a prophet or some kind of relative or someone promiscuous who betrayed him. Yeah. Huh? No, I'm almost done, baby. Give me a second, okay? <laughs> Conflicted. Multiple choices. Hot and cold decisions. Noah could be significant. Oh my gosh. So whatever happened the one time for this vow he took that it made him so conflicted and because it was comp guilty and guilty and the picture, you saw the bigger picture after. He saw the bigger picture and he felt so guilty for what he, whatever he witnessed or did or, I don't know, what did you do? What did you do? What did they do? What did you, what, like, it's sexual assault, but I mean, like, hmm, reminiscing. So it's something that he would constantly think about. Something that he couldn't stop thinking about it. Something that changed him. He felt pain and, and damaged by it. Curse. I'd like to do one celebrity read that didn't have to deal with witchcraft. It's like every single celebrity from the past, I bet you 100% they're famous because of witchcraft. Too many to count. Too many to count. Too many to count. That's what Biggie just said. They're all a part of witchcraft. <coughs> That's why he felt so conflicted. He didn't want to be a part of this group anymore he created a contract with these people a vow for riches and fame he w could have possibly been sexually assaulted or witnessed it or even maybe gained health issues from this Poss he was a divine masculine Biggie Smalls a divine masculine <gasps> Hey, boo. Divine feminine over here. Single. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll date a dead person before I date a man. Karma. Oh my gosh. Consequences. Cause and effect. Debts. <laughs> they killed him because he's a divine masculine. 
They tried to curse him and they couldn't. But he did something. He was talked into doing something to get riches dealing with karmic relationships but he felt so guilty thinking about it every day he couldn't stop thinking about it that it conflicted him and either negative mindset or witchcraft but we do have religious beliefs here prophet led it's it hasn't said it but it kind of feels like it could be possible well let's keep going so this could have possibly affected his mind so much that it cursed him in that way where he was always thinking negative and so that was always boomeranging back to him you know um because of the karma the consequences of his actions he was paying a debt for something he did that he felt really guilty about <gasps> look lgbt at the top obsession father witness or bystander a secret A group of us predisposing so there's a letter in here there's binoculars which suggests voyeurism or watching and there's two people of the same sex in here so some kind of obsession Jealousy, obsessive lover. I'm just going to say what he's giving me. And I don't know. <clears throat> maybe some people won't like it. But <clears throat> I think that Biggie Smalls was sexually was SA'd by an obsessive person possibly of the same sex and I think that it was done multiple times to the point where it was affecting his um, blessings and his ability to create and he um, became an addict and he was a divine masculine who had a lot of people around him that didn't want to let go of him. Probably, if you're a divine masculine, then you're a manifester. You're, man you're a master manifester. You got a natural light about you. It's easy for you to create. It's easy for you to be authentically yourself. It's easy for you to do anything. You, anything you touch turns to gold. You're a nice person. Heart. heart. Yeah, you have a great heart. But he just said heart. So, what I'm getting is that. Um, he must have had a, some kind of female handler that was assigned to him to keep him addicted and in a low vibration, um, possibly with health issues, um, who could possibly be a, a, an obsessive love style as well to keep him as a puppet, to stop him from going to the law to burn and persecute him and his brand if he does because of some kind of betrayal over religious beliefs that he was going to go to the law about yeah he was hanging on by a thread for an ongoing battle that just wouldn't stop probably having to do with witchcraft clarity but the truth is clear now the truth is out now because now we're seeing that we're becoming aware of a lot more depth of this situation than was previously told to us they said there are good times and excitement and uh, they're chasing thrills I thought you know everything they portrayed on TV seemed that everything was going so fabulous so what is all this sexual assault and what is all this blocking your blessings and stuff and uh, traps and vows taken and what is all this 
a daughter. Paul could be significant. <clears throat> oh, return. Second chance. Oh, he wanted to return to his daughter, his family. He was making plans to leave. Finality in reverse. He was making plans to cut ties. The thread. He wanted to cut. He's not going up to the rainbow. He's, he's climbing out of this darkness trying to make it to the rainbow because he wants this to be final, but it's in reverse. It ended up being a final end to him because they wouldn't let him leave. Yeah, he wanted to be the runner. He was trying to find a way out because whatever this shit was, was fucking bullshit. And he was like, I am divine masculine. I am of the light. This is not what I signed up for. I am not here. I'm not about this. And it killed him inside. It ate him away inside. Bitterness, resentful, anger, hurtful words. It was always fighting within himself and outside of himself because they didn't want him to leave. They saw him as a cash cow, a manifester. They wanted to be like him. They wanted to steal all his energy, his creativity. They wanted to ruin his life and suck him dry. Mistakes. He realized he made a mistake the minute that he signed up with these people. It was almost like so fast in the blink of an eye chasing they chased him they they pursued him they gave him all kinds of temptations drugs um houses money they really were uh, persistent in their pursuit of him of chasing him because they knew that if they could make his shadow side more dominant that they could have control of him you made me realize my flaws so he stuck around in his shadow for a long time until gun gun you guys for a long time until he wanted to leave and it, he tried to make it hidden but he tried to escape he tried to escape and to his shock and dismay someone found out about it a libra he was shocked some kind of epiphany or shocking news gave him a great level of understanding about the situation and a higher viewpoint which made him want to run he was trying to escape he was under illusions in the past he realized his understanding was that he's under illusions unbalanced and distorted he was it was in reverse so this was uh in the past he must have realized something before he got killed Yeah, I'm trying to move on a new chapter. He got wind of some kind of information that helped him see something that he didn't see before. That relieved his stress and he was excited to go. Family in reverse. Parenthood, pregnancy. Turbulence, tension, arguments. So his new chapter was going to be stress-free. No more family problems. He was going to be fertile. He was going to have ideas now. He was going to be able to get away from these people. But conflict happened. Differences happened. They, he didn't. A fight happened. He didn't want to forgive what had happened. He was like, "What the hell, man? You said that I was gonna have this. You promised, and then this happened. Like, what are you thinking? Like, why would I want to stay here?" He's like, "I'm out of here." Yeah, what are you thinking? I said, and thinking comes out. He doesn't desire to stay here, but these people need him for some reason. They need him. I don't know why they need him so bad. Spirit, why do they want him to stay so bad? fascinated because they were fascinated by him because he was ascending because <gasps> he's a divine masculine stop it he was preparing for a divine union what biggie are you saying that you what are you saying i don't know what you're saying a reunion! Didn't I just say they were preparing for a divine union? A reunion of something. We'll always come back together. He has come back to God because he was supposed to be a light worker this whole time. He was supposed to be an artist. <clears throat> he was supposed to be a performer of the light. And he got picked up 
mist. He got picked up in the mist by these people when he was in a foggy time in his life and they got him to be on the dark side for a while but then he wanted to, he realized something. Something came to his um, shock and dismay about illusions that were placed over him, distortions, and it created, he, he got an understanding about it and so he knew it was going to have a new chapter for him because for music he just said music because he wanted to move on and do his own thing because he didn't want to be a part of this group anymore so he was going to reunite with his own self with the god and he was going to ascend and they didn't want that they didn't want him to ascend why who cares oh my gosh that's too many that's too many why didn't they want him to ascend? Why didn't they want Biggie to ascend? Oh. Confusion. Because they wanted him to be stay confused? Or they wanted some they didn't they wanted confusion to be about ascending? They didn't want anyone to they wanted what? Sorrow. Confusion. They wanted to create sorrow and confusion around ascending because he was ascending. So they had to create, they had to stop that. So they're like, if we kill him, then people will forget that he was going to break free from us because of how horrible we are. And we'll just create some confusion and sorrow. People will be in grief and stuff. They won't even think about it. Yeah, influences to influence the public and third party and peers. So they won't even question it and reveal lamp. And, uh, and illuminate the truth. Biggie wanted to break free of this group because they were doing some weird fucking religious shit and taking vows and taking names and shape-shifting and shit. And he's like, I don't want to be a part of this because it, it involved to toxicity, sexual assault, health issues. So he went to the law to try to stop it. But they have places, they have people in high places. And so it was a persecution because he was going to come out against them and he wanted to break free and do his own thing. And they needed him. They needed him for his energy because he's a divine masculine. He was a light worker. He was supposed to be creating in the light and they knew that. And he didn't know that. And so they kept him in a dark place for a long time. He had a handler, a female handler, an empress, a siren in reverse, someone really nasty. Could have possibly been a wife figure or girlfriend. Um, he, his sexual assault perpetrator was possibly LGBT, a black male possibly, who sexually assaulted him over and over again. And he did not like it. Blood. Blood. He possibly bled because of this. Had to go to the hospital and that's what made him want to go to the law and stop it but they did everything they could to stop his blessings they kept him in addictions they kept him on a merry-go-round of burdens and and all kinds of things where where's the card bad luck upheaval disorder lack and control disruption unwelcome change delays setbacks and he made a vow to get all this stuff and he did but he could never be happy because they kept him so fucked up all the time so then finally something came to light where it was a shocking revelation about why his judgment was so cloudy and it and it surprised him as epiphany it created a transformation and a new chapter he knew was coming for him he was ready to get a reunion with god because he was in such confusion and got a and he got forgiveness for himself and he was about to ascend and they didn't want him to reveal something because they've been influencing third party things so they said we'll kill him they said we'll kill him we'll create confusion we'll create sorrow and grief and they won't even be thinking about it oh my god oh But he was ready to heal. He was at a place where he was ready to do some healing. He was ready to make music of the light. And they stopped him from doing that. They stopped him from doing that. He <laughs> Inseparable. Yeah. You, you can never be separated from God. But he knows that now. That him and God are inseparable. But at the time that's what they do they try to separate you from any kind of joy or light 
But that's where creativity comes from, and that's why they needed him. On a ring, many options, unconventional. Yeah, this was definitely something that strung him along, that was an ongoing battle for a long time that he tried to manage, and but he was just being handled. What was the revelation? Gossip. I'm afraid of what other people will think. So maybe he heard some shocking information that was similar to what he went through. Unexpected outcome. Yeah, I can't make it up. Some unexpected gossip that was really similar to what he went through. And he realized that it was happening to multiple people. And he wanted to break away from it. I don't know if he was going to tell anyone. Which he says, yeah, I think that's a witness or bystander. Yeah, unworthy. So because of his inability to come forward and because he didn't expect things to go the way they did, he was afraid of what other people would think if he told everyone that he was raped by a black guy to get famous, you know, because that's ultimately what the religious devotion seems to be, some kind of essay that you have to go through um, or witness. And it left him broken. It might made him feel unworthy. And so he feared so much the gossip I'm afraid of what other people will think I'm afraid of what other people will think that I was essayed by a man against my will to be famous yeah he said yeah yeah Biggie Smalls was in the oh, now he's in the morgue now he's in the morgue because he didn't stand up for what he believed in in the beginning and he allowed people that he didn't know were his enemies to betray him and make him think that he was going to get all these things and riches and uh, to his shock and dismay, the only thing he got was addictions and hell. He got, he was not having fun. <clears throat> Yeah, teddy bear. He could never enjoy just a soft moment of just being a divine masculine, you know? I know, you know, I'm not shooting my own horn or anything. It took a long time to to be divine feminine, but I, to do it, it's, it's like you really got to be by yourself and you got to almost like romanticize yourself, like wife... A wife myself a wife I'm gonna marry myself you know and he didn't really get time to do that as a divine masculine <clears throat> but now he's in a place where he can heal and purify and cleanse and he can see from a higher perspective what shattered him or destroyed him and um, I think that what he's saying is that gossip and the fear of what other people think is what really, like, um, ruined him. <laughs> and seduction. <laughs> Attraction, teasing, hookups, third-party temptations. And we also have temptation over here, too. Temptation. So, just like, you know, temptation of the flesh. Any other human, you know. <clears throat> Control your flesh. Thank you so much, Biggie. Mr. Christopher Wallace, can you please close us out with a few cards to tell us what are the life lessons that you learned from your human experience here? Thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. A new opening. When one door closes, I am confident another will open and it will be for my betterment. I accept that... <laughs> I accept that life brings challenges and acknowledge the opportunity and learning they present to me. Serenity comes from within. Oh, that really got me. That was beautiful. Thank you, Biggie. So what he's saying with this is that he came from such a narrow-minded place that he thought that it was the only way he could um, be this, a creator, a performer. Yeah, there's something wrong here. But he knew the whole time that there was something wrong here. That there was something off. and he, But he thought it was his only door. So when one door closes, I'm confident another one will open. So now he sees in retrospect 
that he should have followed that feeling. He should have, if he felt like something was wrong here, that's your indication that something is wrong. Just because you don't know what it is, doesn't mean you should stick around and find out because your guys are already know from a higher perspective what's good for you and what's not good for you. And Biggie's saying that he didn't listen to his inner guidance. He thought he only had one option and so he took it instead of standing back and being certain that God would provide another way. Thank you so much, Biggie, for being with us. Please tell us the life lessons you learned from your human experience so that we may also absorb these experiences and learn from them too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Affirmation <coughs> and open to the universe. So what I'm getting from this is that these people created so much fear in him that his affirmations were opposite of what he wanted. So he kind of manifested his own death in a way because instead of military, uh, military he had a military precise focus on how much fear he had being around these people and how much they were blocking his blessings and that's what they wanted. They wanted him to, cause he's a divine creator. He, he's a powerful manifester. His thoughts create things and they knew that. And so he's saying now from an outside perspective, if he knew then what he knows now, he would have seen that their controlling of his focus and the, uh, putting his creativity in a closet and putting his thoughts in a closet, a dark closet, he actually manifested the opposite of what his heart wanted. <clears throat> and even though he had help, that's the way energy works. If he had just chosen to ignore these people and to just, you know, drop them like a habit and ask God for help and for assistance, he would have immediately gotten assistance and followed his intuition and made po more positive affirmations. I listen to myself and acknowledge my needs. I assert myself and retain my power. I am brave and gentle. I don't have to be afraid of others. I respect myself and I am respected by others. Yeah, his affirmations were always full of what are these people going to do to me today? And who am I going to have to, you know, I'm, there's always someone out for me. And, you know, he constantly focused on the noise around him, you know? Oh, that's what this thread is. See, he's trying to focus in a place full of, but it's disconnected because he's not really 